Alright guys, so we've been reviewing a lot of charge controllers on the channel, so why stop, right? <laughs> I found this one on Amazon. It's an MPPT 20 amp. It has Bluetooth, and it feels like it's got some weight to it. And it was only $33. Look at this. Let's open it up. Okay, we got a temperature sensor, mounting hardware, comes with a little installation template, owner's manual. Uh, here's the, the app, little thing to scan for the app, and then the unit itself. Looks pretty good. It feels pretty solid, it doesn't feel cheap or anything. It's got the PV input, the battery, and the load. And it also has two USB ports. All right, so I've got it hooked up to our uh, Cal Cal battery, and it is it is on, so that part works. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to test these USB ports because I think you could build a really small, cheap, useful PV system like for emergencies with this, and it'd just be super cheap, and to be able to charge phones and things like that without having to buy extra converters and things, that would be awesome so that was what I was thinking about when I purchased this so let's see yeah it's charging rapidly it says very nice so already off to a good start it came on and it's <laughs> the USB ports work look at that it's charging my tablet too sweet all right well let's get some solar plugged in uh, first, let's look through the manual to see. Wait a minute, I thought I think I saw a little sticker up here. Look at that max PV voltage, 100 volts. Nice for such a cheap unit. It will take 100 volts. It says it'll do 520 watts at 12 volts and 1,040 watts at 24 volts. 40 amps. Is that the? That don't seem right, guys. I don't think this is a. I don't think that's the right sticker. That's a sticker for a 40 amp. Okay, so we better look in the manual to see what the PV voltage actually is. Because I don't think that's the right sticker. And it may be telling us something that's not correct on the voltage. And the manual says for a 20, 30, 40, and 50 amp. So now I don't know. Because this manual is going to cover all of them. Okay, so it has the specs for the 20, 30, 40, and 50 amp here. So 100 volts for all four models. It'll do 260 at 12 volts, 520 watts at 24 volts. All right, so let's hook up some solar. Okay, nothing blew up. Does appear to be raising the battery voltage. <laughs> it's saying 20, 23 amps, almost 24 amps. Get out of here. It's showing that it's going over the 20 amp limit. Let's see. Okay. All right, showing 20, showing 20 there. Okay, now it's level. It's it's settled down to 20. Yeah, 20, and it says exactly the same thing here. So that's a good sign already. Let's pull up the BMS app for the battery. Yeah, so the BMS is showing 19.6, and it's showing 19. Point nine right there well I mean this thing is doing what it's supposed to <laughs> that's amazing how can this only be thirty three dollars what's going on here kinda wanna lift it up so that way it can breathe back there yeah it's solid on twenty amps here let's try to find the, B uh, the Bluetooth app actually you know what before we do that let's check the efficiency so we've got four point 4.12 amps coming in at 70.9 volts. So that's showing 292 going in. And on our BMS app, we're showing 262 going into the battery. Okay, so we're showing 89.7% efficient, basically 90% efficient. That's not terrible. I mean, for a $33 charge controller, that's not terrible at all. And this thing's just cranking along, and it's god-awfully hot outside, I can tell you that. 
we're not 98 degrees right here. 118 on the charge controller. We've got 134 on the heat sink. Yeah, this number here is tracking like almost perfect with what the BMS is saying. We're saying 18.5 here. We got 18.8 there. Now let's get the Bluetooth app. So we'll scan that little code there. So it goes to this website and it says S controller and it uh, it tries to download directly from them. But I think I've seen this app before on the App Store for like a different charge controller or something. Yeah, so there is one on the Android App Store called S controller with the same logo. Oh, I've actually already got it installed, so I must have used it on something else. So let's just try that one. Yeah, there it is. Bluetooth. So it sees something here. I just don't know what it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, yeah, so it's showing 19 amps. Uh, it's 261 watts going to the battery. Yeah, it's showing everything very nicely. And then we've got settings. So it's set up to auto identify, which I don't like. You don't want to use that uh, because if your battery disconnects, it'll start trying to try, try higher voltages. So I would uh, I would set that. There we go. And then I think you got to hit this little floppy disk icon. And then it rebooted the uh, rebooted the unit, and we're back in business. I must say. <laughs> <laughs> this little thing is impressive so far. Okay, we actually got an error right now. And it's flashing the little Celsius symbol. I bet this is... Yeah, it's pretty warm. I think it's it's trying to cool down. It is like majorly hot out here. I'm sweating. My camera is hot and it's telling me it's hot. There's a warning sign on my camera that says it's hot so that my camera might actually shut down. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, the warning cleared and now it's back to charging. Yeah, I think what it's doing is it's going to, it's going to throw that error, flash that little Celsius symbol and stop charging for a minute to allow itself to cool down. And then it'll go back to charging and it'll probably stop again, which, you know, I'm not mad at because like I said, it is, melting hot outside so this thing is protecting itself it does have a probably a smallish heat sink for a 20 amp controller but maybe if you were to mount this on a piece of aluminum uh, that would help something like this yeah we're back into the throttle mode not sure how much that'll help because it's not screwed down to it but it might wick away some of that, some of that heat. Okay, now it's back to charging. Okay, so we've tested the USBs. Those work fantastic. We test the unit. It actually does the 20 amps that it says it's supposed to. Uh, what I want to do, actually I want to test this at 24 volts now. All right, so I disconnected the solar. I wasn't going to uh, disconnect the battery first and risk if a $33 MPPT controller would be able to handle that. A Victron would, but I'm not, I don't know. Okay, so I've got a 24 volt battery here and uh, we're gonna swap over. I also feel like, I feel like it probably runs cooler at 24 volts. And 24 volts is ultimately the voltage I have planned for this unit. And that'll be an upcoming video. And the unit's on, and I do see it giving an error code and I think the error code that it is displaying is saying that it's set for 12 volts, but we've got it connected to 24 volts. Ow. So it's saying battery error 12 volts. We'll just go into app and reconfigure it for 24. Battery settings, let's do 24. You can select all these other voltages in here. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would. I think that they're not going to have components in here that's going to handle those other voltages, not for this price. So I've set it for 24. Unfortunately, all these other parameters did not change. We're going to have to do this manually. We're just going to go ahead and just double everything. Do 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.8. 28.
Is that everything? Uh, oh yeah, we don't want any temperature compensation. Do zero. All right, well let's save those values. Are you kidding me? Did it change everything back? Oh no, it lost our, our settings went back. That's not cool. I mean, we're set here to 24 volts now. Oh wait, looks like it actually, I guess, set defaults. So it did kind of blow our settings out. So a little flaky here. Okay, so we finally got the temperature compensation to zero. So maybe what you need to do is when you change the system voltage from 12 to 24, go ahead and save that and then go in and change any settings that you want. All right guys, so this is actually after I filmed everything and I just wanted to come back in and insert some things that I figured out after the video. So I'm putting that in here now. Pretty much this absor absorption voltage, recovery, duration, all these other settings, they don't really do anything. The one that you're going to use to set your charging voltage is this float charging voltage. Uh, that's the only one that really works. So I've got it set to 27.6 right now after the video, and that's because my battery right here doesn't like 28. But that, it'll charge up to this point and then stop. It doesn't care about these other voltages. It won't do anything with them. Uh, so the only thing you really need to focus on, I would set this to this float charging voltage to the voltage that you want. Get rid of this temperature compensation. Make sure that's zero. I don't know if it uses it or not, but you definitely don't want that on lithium. And if you have any equalization uh, duration or anything like that, I'd make those zero and the absorption zero. But uh, again, this is the only one it cares about really, this uh, float charging voltage. And, uh, and the other thing I wanna add too is I've used the lithium. There's a lithium iron phosphate setting instead of, instead of the custom. And it does work. It actually grays out all these settings here and gives you basically just a few settings. And one of them is the lithium constant voltage, which works just like the float charge voltage here. And it does work, but the one thing that I don't like that it does is it'll charge the battery up and then stop at that voltage. And then when you place a load on it, the load will drain power out of your battery. And then after some period of time, the charger will come back on and charge your battery back up. So you're constantly draining power out of your battery and charging your battery back up. Draining power out, charging it back up. Whereas if you use this customized setting, um, it actually will detect the load if your battery's full and only provide enough power for the load like it should. So it's not actually draining your battery down a little bit and then charging it back up. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the video. Let's go ahead and plug the solar back up. Let's see what it says. You know, 21, so 20, 21 amps. Okay, I guess we're at the float voltage of the battery. Yeah, I guess this battery's full, dang it. We need something to draw this battery down. All right, guys, so I hooked up this Zero Breeze air conditioner to the 24 volt battery. It's actually a 24 volt air conditioner, so I just wired up this plug directly. We are currently pulling 227 watts from solar, and that's probably about what the AC is doing. So let's see, we got 8.12 amps. So let's see if that's what we got here. Yeah, we got about 8.7 amps that the AC is pulling. And uh, the app is telling us 8.4. So really, uh, yeah, pretty much this thing is doing what it's supposed to be doing, powering the load. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the solar to allow the air conditioner to draw this battery down some. There we go. So the solar's disconnected on one side. We'll let this AC run and draw this battery down some and we'll be back. All right, so we've uh, pulled this battery down a little bit. And so now when we plug in the panels, we should be getting back to full charging. Okay, now we're generating, oh look, 554 watts. Nice, 20 amps. It's cranking. This thing's not perfect, but it's not bad at all for $33. And when I say it's not perfect, I'm gonna say that I think the settings are, they're good, but they seem a little bit quirky. 
Yeah, we are just chomping along at 555 watts. <laughs> wow. Okay, so while we're doing this, let's check the efficiency. So we got 9.14 amps going in. 62.9 volts. So we're showing 574 coming in and 554 going out. Yeah, I think the efficiency is way better at 24 volts. So let's do that calculation. Oh, there it is, guys. 96.6% efficient at 24 volts. Yeah, so you can do this thing at 12, but it really shines at 24. And I think the unit's definitely running not as hot. Because I can actually leave my fingers up on the heat sink. I mean, it's warm. Showing 123. 127. Yeah, so it seems a little slightly a little bit cooler. I haven't seen it do that overheat thing that it was doing at 12 volts. Alright guys, so I did some playing around with this thing off camera. And this is what I figured out. Their app works much better on my tablet than my phone. So it actually it actually shows a, a name. So that's the address of the controller. It uh, seems to connect better. It just works, seems to work better. My phone is kind of old, so that could be the problem. It's no Victron, but it's not bad at all. And for the price, it's just a steal. All right, guys, so I think that's gonna be the end of the video. I would normally be a little bit more hard on a charge controller that had some quirks to it like this but given the fact that it's only $33 I think that warrants letting it have a little leeway I mean it's only $33 <laughs> so give me your thoughts your opinions in the comments as always please like and subscribe if you have not yet that really helps the channel out and I'll catch you guys on the next one